you know, we at Stanford really aspire to true excellence um, and really to be a community engaged with uh, the most important health issues that our world faces. And we really uh, put a lot of effort into creative work, into innovative work that will transform the future. I think that the Eating Disorder Program illustrates all of the things that are just wonderful about this department. Uh, there's a platform of really innovative science, uh, there's dedication to clinical service and developing new ways of caring for patients. The reason we have to have a focused eating disorder program is in part because these disorders tend to be treated by specialists. And that's happened because many, many training programs for psychiatry and psychologists don't have the expertise to provide training for general practitioners of psychology and psychiatry. So as a result, we have specialty centers. Another reason that we need to have this is because there's been really insufficient research in terms of either understanding the origin of the disorders or the treatment of these disorders. And these two things um, are uh, require a deep understanding of, the, of, of what eating disorders are, how they affect people, um, and how you can treat them. And that is something that you can only really get if you have a focused um, kind of program. We are um, rebuilding basically how we do clinical training for a specific type of um, treatment called family-based treatment for um, anorexia nervosa. And that's really exciting because it, uh, we developed it at the same time that uh, uh, an innovation in online learning had occurred and that is massive open online courses and we were able to use that learning and methodology to really restructure how clinicians learn this treatment and develop a very rich learning experience. We have developed quite an innovative, I think, method for uh, training clinicians. The behavioral milieu on the unit is uh, structured in such a way that the patients have the ability to um, work together in inpatient groups and um, they are able to have meals together. But overall, we're very family focused and so we encourage parents and siblings to be here as much as they're able to. We encourage family meals and um, we really work together with the family rather than keeping the parents apart from the treatment process. We can tell from the literature that children and adolescents with eating disorders have really significant changes in their thinking. So when we're working with children and adolescents using cognitive remediation therapy, what we're really focusing on is learning how to do things like change your mind, practice new skills, change things up in your world. When we change these things, it really heightens not only our curiosity, but also our attention. Cognitive remediation seeks to really work on these strong, habit processes and really introduce a psychological set of change and focus on the big picture to really help children and adolescents make the most of their developing cognition. For us in the eating disorder program, I think the main areas that we're most excited about are the use of technology to disseminate and implement treatments that are effective, to increase access uh, to experts and expertise. Uh, to use technology to train people uh, so that expert treatments are no longer uh, relegated just to a few centers and, and uh, that patients and their families can get the help they need. Uh, and then I think the other uh, main area has to do with neuroscience and the, um, that neuroscience has to, uh, is fundamentally related to how the brain of a person with an eating disorder when they're developing the symptoms, while they have them and after they've recovered, how they differ or don't differ from people who don't have eating disorders, really trying to understand this, this brain basis for the risk for and treatment response to eating disorders. We have also been conducting um, some research on pediatric obesity and the development of pediatric obesity and looking at um, very young children who are overweight and at risk for development of obesity and looking at um, how brains respond to taste with uh, the idea of testing out a developmental uh, model where brain response to taste might change over time um, as obesity develops. And the goal there is really to be able to identify some um, biological 
uh, risk factors for the development of obesity to better um, target and um, identify children who uh, might need a little bit more support and, and intervention to prevent the onset of obesity. Preparing for bariatric surgery is a significant burden on children and families. Children and families need to learn how to eat differently, how to engage in exercise that's going to help promote weight loss, how to integrate a lot of information from different health providers to help them on their weight loss journey. So I would say that eating disorders have been neglected scientifically throughout the world. Um, it's, it's wonderful that this has been a priority of our department for really uh, decades. Um, because of that sustained work, because of that clear priority on this set of conditions, I think we're really making a difference throughout the world and that our faculty are exerting leadership that is highly influential and is improving lives, improving health outcomes throughout the world.